actually, let's just go to an example. I think that'll that'll make it much more interesting. Okay, so so say I have this. I want to model the simple diffusion equation like this, right? Del C over del T is del two C over del X two, right? That's the equation I'm modeling. And here are my boundary conditions. At X is zero, my concentration is one, always. At X is 10, my concentration is zero, so it drops, okay? And then here's my initial value that uh, at X is zero, the initial value is one, but everywhere else the initial value is zero. So what's gonna happen intuitively in the system? You have basically a source at x is equal to zero, right? And that's got a value of one. And everywhere else, every, the concentration is zero. And over time, you know, from the source, things are gonna diffuse. And this is, this is the geometry of this is just linear. It's not spherical, it's not cylindrical. So we're just gonna, okay? So we're gonna try and put this in PDE PE format. And so let's look at that. So I'm gonna first specify X mesh and T span, which are my vectors for the spatial coordinate and time. And so I just use linspace to do that. It's convenient to do, do that in this case. Is everybody familiar with linspace? It just, the syntax of linspace is you specify a starting coordinate and ending coordinate and the number of points you want between those. Again, this is the syntax for PDE PE that I call. And so let's look at PDE fun. So PDE fun has these four mandatory input arguments, x, t, u, d, u, d, x. u in this case is concentration, right? And so again, let's go back to the form here. Looking at this form, my equation is del u over del t is del 2 c over del x2, right? So c is just one, that makes sense? This coefficient is just one here. That's what I have here. My flux term is just, del u over del x, right? That's how I get, get the del 2c over del x2. So my flux, I can just set equal to du over du dx. That's an input argument to PDE fun. And there is no, there is no source term. There's no sort of, uh, yeah, there's no source term or there's no forcing on. So I can set, set that to zero. So that takes care of my differential equation, uh, of my partial differential equation, okay? Let's look at IC fun. I said for IC fun that if you're looking at x at zero, then the value of concentration is one everywhere else at zero. So that's this here, just an if condition. And again, you do, I haven't explored this too much, but I'm sure like we talked about in the lecture two notes with OD45, how these sort of discontinuous conditions can cause problems. In this case, it probably can also. Something that you should feel free to explore. Discontinuities are generally used a lot in partial differential equations. Um, when they become a problem, sort of, I think you have to investigate a little bit. But then boundary, so let's talk about BC fun, which is a little complicated. Um, so boundary conditions at the left and the right need to satisfy, according to the MATLAB sort of convention, this equation. So you have at the left boundary as well as the right boundary, there's going to be a PL and a PR, QL and a QR, right? And this equation needs to be satisfied, which means, for example, that in this case, if my, if my concentration at the left boundary, which is x is equal to zero in this case, is one, I've pinned it at one, then <clears throat> this is the, again, the same flux term as in PDE fun, so Q has to be zero because I don't have any form of del u over, F is del u over del x, right? So Q cannot contribute to my boundary condition. It's not there. But P, right, for this equation to hold, must be equal to the left boundary value minus one. And I'll tell you what that means. So the input arguments to BC fun are these four here. So one is the value of the spatial coordinate at the left boundary. The sec this is the value of the concentration at the left boundary. This is the value of the spatial coordinate at the right boundary, the value of the concentration at the right boundary and time, okay? So when you say PL is equal to UL minus one, then it knows that UL is the value of concentration again at the left boundary, right? So UL minus one is required to satisfy the original equation, which is this one right here, because if, if UL is pinned at one, then UL minus one is just zero, and then this equation gets satisfied. Does that make sense? It's a little bit of a confusing syntax, and I'll go over it again. So for both boundary conditions, this equation needs to be satisfied. F 
is the flux term, which was the same as in PDE fun, which is del u over del x in the case of this example. So q must be zero for the left boundary because my left boundary condition is just that the concentration is pinned at zero. There's no del c over del x term. So this is zero, which means that p should be equal to zero now, right, for the left boundary. And to set p is equal to zero, my concentration at the left boundary is one. And to set p is equal to zero, then I have to have p of the form ul minus one or potentially one minus ul. And so, does that make sense? Questions about that? Bit of a confusing syntax. Hopefully you'll see more examples and it'll be clear with that. I'll, we'll be doing five examples. So, PR in this case is at x is equal to 10, there my concentration is zero, so I just write UR there, right? And so again, going back to the same notion, UR would be equal to zero in this case. PR would be equal to zero, right? Because QR is also zero, which means that the concentration will remain the same. Just gonna run this and you'll see this over and over again, the BC fun, which will hopefully cl clear up things. So, okay, let's run this. So, okay, so just going back to this, so what would we expect for this simple example? You know, at steady state, this profile is linear in space, right? Because delta C over del X2 is equal to zero, so you'll get a linear profile in space at steady state, right? So, and this is sort of what we observe here, right? But you see how it, this is the time coordinate right here. So at steady state, that's good. So let's move on to another example to further understand how BC fun is working. Before doing that, I want to mention how I plotted this as just using surf. And in surf, you can X mesh T span and then so let's look at the second example. Here I have diffusion with elimination, okay? So my equation has changed, which means that something in PDE fun will change. What will change in PDE fun? Now I have a sourcing term, the S term is there. So I'll just add that. The boundary conditions are all the same. So let's look at example two. I basically changed, that's the only change I think that I've made. The geometry is the same. All I've done is added this S is now minus U, right? because I've added that. So everything else is the same, I run that. So my expectation is that with, with there being this elimination term now, instead of getting this linear profile, that I would depress this profile, right? And the steady state solution is an exponential, it's a sum of exponentials. Um, so that's what I observe here. It, that makes sense, okay? The steady state solution is sum of exponential because you get delta C over del X2 minus C is equal to zero, which is like a linear second order differential equation, homogeneous constant coefficients, right? So that's sum of exponentials. Okay, let's look at another example where now I have an impermeable barrier at the end at X is equal to 10. So instead of having C of X is equal to 10, my boundary condition is in terms of C prime or the derivative. So I'm saying that there's no flux happening at the boundary. That's what my uh, boundary condition has become now. And so the equation is the same as in the case of example one. The only ex change I would expect in example one, there was a linear profile at steady state. That linear profile is clearly not going to hold anymore, right? Because here, in the case of a linear profile, I still have some flux at, at x is equal to 10. It's always, a gradient always exists. So now I'd expect when I impose this new boundary condition that the gradient would flatten out, right? Does that make sense? Does that make sense generally? If you want me to repeat stuff, I'm happy to. Quiet today. Um, so, so example three, <laughs> we're just, um, Right, so we have the same boundary conditions as in problem one, and the same PDE fund. The only difference here is that we have, have a new, sorry, we have, sorry, actually, we have new boundary conditions, so I can teach you what BC fund is. So now I've changed the boundary conditions, if you see, as opposed to example one, where at the left boundary, which it was x is equal to zero, I still have the same boundary condition, so that's why the P 
PL and the QL are the same, right? I'm still saying that the concentration is pinned at one. But at the right boundary, instead of saying that the concentration is pinned at zero, which was the case here, I'm now saying that the derivative is pinned at zero with respect to space. So I've changed this here. You can see now PR is zero and QR is one. And why does that make, why does that make sense? Again, going back here, this is the boundary condition equation at the left boundary. My, again, my F is just del C over del X or del U over del X. So now if I make Q as one and then P as zero, then it's telling MATLAB, okay, now del C over del X is zero at this right boundary. That's how that boundary condition comes. That's how this is working. Hopefully this gives you a little bit more insight into what these boundary conditions are. So now let's run this. Again, very similar. So now you can see here, sort of this is the plot. And so what's happening here is that this concentration profile at you know, spatial coordinate zero is pinned at one, as I specified in my left boundary. But over time, instead of taking this linear path that I was taking earlier in the first example, I'm sort of flattening out my curve. So here, the derivative with respect to space has become zero. That's what I wanted, right? Because I said that the flux, so at x is equal to 10, which is what's happening. This is, the surface is becoming flatter. And so another way to, okay, intuitively, what does this mean? Why is this so much higher as compared to example one? Any thoughts? Why are the concentrations so much higher? Exactly, nothing is diffusing out of the system. Right, so you have this defined area of space and all your materials sitting in there, so every, all the concentrations are gonna go up. Okay. Uh, Fourth example, so let's now change the geometry, right? So far we were working with linear geometry. Let's look at an example in spherical coordinates. So let's say that you have a cell inside a bath, right? And you're looking at this, the bath has some nutrient and you're looking at how this nutrient is going to diffuse through into the center of the cell and the cell is a sphere and what other assumptions do engineers make? Uh, the, the bath, yeah, so there, there's first order elimination happening of a nutrient, okay. So this is the, dif this is the partial differential equation, right? Right, we get, right? Um, and so I have a specific value for the elimination constant here, which is 0.1. Um, but so again, how do we code this in MATLAB? Example four, so one change I've made is M is now two. Two represents spherical coordinates, right? And my, my PDE font is similar to example two, which was when we were looking at elimination. My initial values are still similar, except the only thing I've changed is earlier, at x is equal to zero, my initial value is one. Now at x is xf, which is 10, because I'm looking at this bath, right? The bath is sitting at the end at x is equal to 10, and stuff is diffusing in. And all the previous examples, stuff was diffusing from inside out. In this case, stuff is diffusing from outside in, okay? The boundary conditions are, in this case, that on the left boundary, which is x is equal to zero, I've, my derivative is zero. At the center of the cell, there's no flux, right? Everything converges in. And at the right boundary, you have a pinned up concentration. Your bath is at a constant concentration, okay? So if you run this, then you get something like this. From the bath going to the center of the cell, and you get profile with elimination, okay? Questions? And the last example I wanna talk about is, to start up talking about coupling, so I mentioned this matrix here, which could, be start, which could be thought of as a coupling matrix. You could have multiple variables at the same time, right? And so let's look at a simple example where we're, again, it's the same as example two, so you're having diffusion with elimination, but I'm, so say this was happening from the blood. So this was representing, say, the blood chamber. And when this stuff is getting eliminated, all it's being, it's being eliminated as being taken up by cells. That's what it means. So it's binding to a receptor and being taken up. And you also want to model the concentration in the cells over time. And say you don't know any other thing, but you know that, you know, so this would represent, for example, del CB over del T is equal to KF, which is that the elimination happening from the blood and going into the 
nomenclature is a little bit confusing because B here doesn't mean cell, uh, blood, but cells. So you're having del C B over del T is C F, which means that stuff is getting eliminated from the blood into tissue, for example, and getting accrued in tissue over time. We haven't modeled an elimination term in tissue, but you could put in another term if you want. Right? So, but the main point of showing this example is to say how you could have coupling um, with two, how could you model two partial differential equations, two variables at the same time. And so, again, this is geometry is linear in this case. And so, what we're going to do here now is PD, fun, all of these become vectors. So, x, u, du, dx, they become vectors. So, u, the u of 1 would represent cf, and u of 2 would represent cd. Similarly, du dx of 1 would represent del cf over del x, and du dx of 2 would represent del cb over del x, and so on. So when you specify cf and s, you just have to be careful of that. c in this case are both 1s, because they're the coefficient of both these time derivatives is just 1. f, the flux for the first case, right, again going back to this is, the previous examples we've done except we'll now have the indexing of 1, right? And the flux in the second case is zero. There's no spatial derivative involved, okay? And the sourcing term in this case is minus u1, and it's plus u1 in the second case. So that's how I set up PDE fun. And again, I specified the boundary condition, the initial conditions I used here, and I just specified them in these functions here too, right? So I do that. And so now I'm going to plot both of these variables over time. This profile you've sort of seen before, right? This is pretty much the same as example two, what we did, but now I also want to look at this mu C variable, which represents what's going into the tissue, and this is, you can imagine what's happening here is, there's no elimination happening from the tissue, so stuff is going to just keep go growing with time, right? You're just accruing stuff with time, which is what this shows. Everything is, at every spatial location, you're just having All you're having is stuff going out from the blood into tissue. So this way is, so what are the, just to summarize, what are the examples we've covered? Or an example of some, so first we've done linear geometries with all, both types of boundary conditions, um, trade off um, specify, specifying the concentration versus specifying the derivative. We've looked at um, how to incorporate sourcing terms like elimination. We've looked at how to change the geometry. We've made it spherical and seen what happens in that case. And then we've also looked at how to like have multiple variables and how to couple partial differential equations. So you can do all of this in PDEPE as long as your partial differential equation satisfies this form. And I told you the syntax of the, how to specify the initial conditions, the boundary conditions. Um, the final thing I want to talk about is that um, LSQ preferred with ODEs, you could also do an get experimental profiles, you could start fitting them, right? So you can imagine that this is as amenable to nesting as ODEs.